We know Axelar has partnered with Ripple to utilize the XRP ledger for its DeFi capabilities. We also know that Axelar has had multiple pilot projects with large financial institutions such as Citibank, Deutsche Bank, and JP Morgan, just to name a few. We're going to dive in today to exactly what they're doing and how they're going to be utilizing the XRP ledger for its DeFi capabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Andrew DeVilvis. Thank you for joining me today. This is the DeVilvis Capital Allocators channel. We're a private group of investors investing on the cutting edge. Let's jump right into today's video. Uh, you guys know in the private group, we do study sessions every day, uh, four times a week. Axelar Institutional Interoperability is the PDF documents we've been going over for the last few days. I just got done filming part three. It's a 30 minute session. Now, during this session, we, we dove into the actual capabilities of the XRP ledger to serve as that underlying layer of liquidity for Axelar. But what, what really unlocks this vision for us is really diving into what is Axelar doing? What type of partnerships are they forming? And what is their vision for this multi-chain interoperable future? So as you see right here from an article of Axelar's, Leveraging Axelar GMP for advanced RWA and DeFi capabilities on the XRP ledger. Axelar Network's integration with the XRP ledger aims to help bolster the XRPL DeFi ecosystem by providing essential liquidity for stablecoins and large cap assets. Developers will also be able to capitalize on the XRPL's built-in features such as the native DEX, the upcoming AMM, and the payment system recognized for its security and efficiency. So we know the AMM has been launched since this article was written. Next up is the decentralized identity, borrowing and lending, and multiple other critical features for institutions to be able to have the legal clarity to engage in DeFi on the XRP ledger. Not every chain can meet these requirements, which is why I think Axelar has chosen Ripple and Ripple has chosen Axelar for its interoperability solutions. Multiple things that we have to discuss in this video and it's going to get a little in depth. Prepare yourself because this is very in depth. This is from the Axelar PDF, a small section just to give you the vision of what they're thinking about when it comes to the XRP ledger. This is a part of a conclusion from the PDF. There is no question that tokenization brings great potential for financial institutions, which is why so many are actively engaging with blockchain technology. But as this paper discusses, building distributed ledgers as walled gardens threatens to undermine the accessibility and liquidity that this technology is supposed to increase. As this field matures, Financial institutions will need to weigh a wider range of technical and legal considerations, as well as increasingly complex risk. Rather than evaluating individual blockchains or tokens, financial institutions may have to consider the safest and most efficient ways for different blockchains to work together. This paper provides some of the tools and resources needed for that evaluation process. So let's break down this paragraph really fast. There is no question that tokenization brings great potential for financial institutions. That's why all these massive financial institutions are here. They want tokenization. They want cross-border, cross-chain liquidity, right? But now we're facing the same problem that traditional finance had, walled gardens. They threaten to undermine the accessibility and liquidity that this technology is supposed to increase. DLT is supposed to aggregate liquidity, it's supposed to break down walled gardens, but now we're faced with another interoperability dilemma, which is where Axelar comes in with their portability protocol for token portability. As this field matures, as they continue on to say, financial institutions will need to weigh a wider range of technical and legal considerations, as well as increasingly complex risk. Now, this is where they start to link in with MasterCard and Visa. Now, we went through a Visa document that we're about to jump into here to talk a little bit more about that. As I said, it's going to get complex, so put on your thinking cap and follow me in. 
As this field matures, financial institutions will need to weigh a wider range of technical and legal considerations, as well as increasingly complex risk. Rather than evaluating individual blockchains or tokens, financial institutions may have to consider the safest and most efficient ways for different blockchains to work together. What does that mean? That means Axelar is now the go-to for scalability, for uh, weaving together multiple blockchains. Right Now, other companies can act as intermediary to onboard institutions into this multi-chain world, which is Axelar's hub and spoke model that we're about to get into. So right here, it says rather than evaluating individual blockchains or tokens, you'd rather have an intermediary onboard you into this vast ecosystem of multiple blockchains. Now, <clears throat> this is the different types of blockchains that Axelar is giving you ability to access public blockchains. We all know that they're all connected to over 50 plus public blockchains. You have hybrid blockchains, private blockchains, consortium blockchains. And this is from the Visa PDF. As Visa's PDF was positioned to onboard institutions into distributed ledger technology, linking together with Axelar, Another important ingredient for flexibility is modularity. Now, what do they mean by modularity? If you want to use a smart contract protocol from a specific chain over here, but you need to source liquidity over here, it gets complex, which is why Axelar is here for that interoperability solution. And they have chosen Ripple for its liquidity. They not Ripple, sorry, XRP Ledger for its liquidity, as you see here. Axelar's cross-chain security, uh, security approach is founded on permissionless proof-of-stake validation with risk mitigation layers, including validator security policies and uh, contract limits on how much can be transferred over a period of time. Axelar is built on a hub-and-spoke network topology, enabling swift contaminant and isolation of problems and connected chains without sacrificing network liveliness or security. Subject to on-chain governance, the XRPL will be integrated into the secure cross-chain infrastructure via a multi-signature contract with 32 Axelar validators signing transactions to and from the XRPL. Software required to deliver the integration will be deployed by Interop Labs. Connecting the XRPL demonstrates Axelar's network market leading ability to integrate diverse consensus mechanisms into a unified environment for building seamless user experiences that scale everywhere. Now, the XRPL adds a powerhouse of DeFi and real world asset innovation into the growing Axelar ecosystem. The Axelar Foundation is excited to support this integration and expand the interconnected world of Web3 together with Ripple and the XRPL. The advancement of blockchain interoperability can break down the silos between networks. It's exactly what they were talking about uh, in the beginning. Breaking down the silos. Now, they're going to be using XRP Ledger for its DEX capabilities, which is that liquidity layer. Now, if we look up above, Axelar Network's integration with the XRPL aims to help bolster the XRPL DeFi ecosystem by providing essential liquidity for stablecoins and large cap assets. Developers will also be able to capitalize on the XRPL's built-in features such as the native DEX, the upcoming AMM and the payment system recognized for security and efficiency. Right, so when Axelar is, is onboarding all these things, you're able to get all this. It's going to be dipping into the XRP Ledger's DeFi uh, protocol. Now, this is more from the Visa PDF. When they are onboarding enterprises into this space, they are showing you what is it going to look like. Number one, does your organization require a shared database system with a combination of known and unknown participants? Number two, does your organization require shared write access to the database who control or with control functionality? So they have all these massive critical questions. And if you say yes or no to certain ones, they're going to uh, lead you to separate chains. 
So you could be on fa a Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Besu, Hyperledger Quorum. It doesn't matter which one they start to tokenize your assets on because they're going to be using this model that connects all blockchains with Axelar. And you're going to be able to get liquidity from the XRP ledger. So in reality, we have now really started to integrate XRP ledger into its position to be that underlying layer of infrastructure. This, this partnership with Axelar is so genius because Axelar is onboarding tons of chains, whereas by their self, uh, Ripple and XRP Ledger, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's like, um, like a bird grabbing seed from a tree and spreading seed. You're growing the tree. Each tree is planted in the ground that has to source that same liquidity. So now we're, it's, we're breaking down walled gardens through this Axelar partnership. This is very, very important because it is going to bring a lot of liquidity and it's going to be bring legitimacy to the um, av availability to arbitrage the XRP Ledger's DeFi protocols. It's going to create an entirely new industry that's just strictly DeFi business case. So... I mean, this is very, very, very complex and interesting how they do this because it's not only these first nine questions, they have more. Does your organization require a general purpose programming language functionality in the blockchain protocol? Does your organization require high throughput TPS and low latency in the blockchain protocol? So there's all these different uh, availabilities, but once they onboard these big institutions they are coming into these private networks, and then they're going to have a, a, a barn door of sorts to the open world of public chains and Web3. So I know this was a bit of an educational video, a little bit deeper education than I usually uh, bring on YouTube. Uh, but this is coming from inside the private group itself. Jump in today. That first month is on me. Come check out these study sessions. Start to learn get educated that's what it's going to take this market is moving fast right now you have to get educated you have to find a community of like-minded individuals if not you're going to be stuck in 2023 2024 because these institutions are moving fast 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 they are their pilots projects are are coming and going and they're moving into real world use case so the xrp ledger in my opinion is suited to be that infrastructure layer, that unified layer to the uh, to the Web3 ecosystem. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Come jump in the group. We'd love to have you. Uh, get your study hat on if you come into the group. We have the study session side, the digital assets, equity, a chat, DeFi and trading, health and wellness documentaries, geopolitics, portfolio building. Uh, just come check it out. Uh, you get that first month. Check it out. Definitely get in here and get that institutional interoperability understood and really see what Axelar is, is doing with the XRP ledger. So anyways, guys, drop a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow every day. We do this every day, unrelenting. I'm going to start going live on Sundays. We're doing a group Zoom in the group on Wednesdays. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays are study sessions. Wednesdays, group Zoom. Thursdays and Fridays, more study sessions. Saturday morning, we're doing a book club. And then Sunday, I'll be going live on YouTube. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.